This video demonstrates the process by which a medical officer would request initial authorization for access to government-funded immunoglobulin products for the treatment of a patient with a medical condition identified in the criteria. I'm currently logged into Bloodstar as a medical officer at the fictional Pearl Bay Hospital. I wish to request immunoglobulin product for a new patient, so I click on New Initial Authorization Request. The first step in creating an initial authorization request is to select the patient. In many circumstances, the patient will be new to the system. However, we do ask you to search for the patient before creating a new record to ensure that we don't create duplicate records. There are no returned results for Jane Blogs, so I'm offered the option to create a new patient record. I complete the additional information required and continue to patient privacy consent. It is the prescribing doctor's responsibility to ensure that the patient has formally provided consent to have their personal information collected and stored in Bloodstar. If required, consent documents are easily accessible from the links on the screen. Once the patient has provided consent, the doctor can record the patient privacy consent in the system. There is an option to upload a copy of the patient consent form, however this step is not mandatory. The patient details have been carried over from the Create Patient screen, and the requesting medical officer and treating medical specialist fields have been pre-populated with the user who is currently logged in. The requesting medical officer is the doctor who is completing the form. To complete step one, we need to link the patient with their treating medical specialist. The treating medical specialist is the doctor who will be responsible for overseeing the patient's IG therapy. This is the doctor who will be notified when the patient is due for review. Step 2 sets out the treating arrangements for the patient. The treating facility is the hospital or facility at which the patient's treatment is managed, usually by the treating medical specialist. The administering facility is the facility the patient attends to have their infusions administered. These may be different locations, for example when the patient sees their specialist at a tertiary hospital in a major centre, but receives their infusions at a second hospital in a regional centre. The dispensing facility is the blood bank, laboratory or pharmacy expected to dispense the IG product during the normal course of the authorization. I can then start to enter information about the diagnosis and how my patient's condition meets the criteria. There is only one specific condition in the system for the medical condition LEMS, so I can move down to indication and diagnosing specialist. I am then presented with additional fields to provide supporting evidence to demonstrate how my patient's medical condition meets the criteria. The request form has been designed to make it easy to complete with check boxes, drop down lists and free text fields for additional information. Step 3. Dosing is based on patient weight and there are provisions in the system for ideal body weight adjusted dosing if required. I am going to set up the induction dose for my patient's treatment, which will be administered by intravenous infusion. Based on the information I have entered, the system has allocated intragam P for my patient's induction dose. The allocation process is used to manage the split between domestic and imported product. If for some reason my patient requires a different product, I can click this button to request an alternative. I will proceed with a 2 gram per kilogram dose for my patient. Although this equates to 160 grams, this dose cannot be made up using the available vial sizes. The system will round to the nearest available dose in this case 159 grams. If I wanted to avoid rounding down, I could request 162 grams with the addition of a reason. 
I don't wish to have this dose divided. I would also like to set up a maintenance regimen for my patient. Again, I select the infusion method and dose details. Again, the system rounds this dose to one that can be made up using the available vial sizes. I would like this to be given every four weeks for three courses, and I would like the maintenance regimen to begin next Wednesday. To complete the form, I declare that the information provided is accurate to the best of my knowledge and click Submit. The initial authorization request has now been submitted. The request has been sent through to a blood service authoriser for assessment and the system will notify me of the outcome. If I wish to check on the status of this or any other authorization, I can view this information in the My Authorization Requests screen.